Okay. So yesterday, did we do the complex data type? Actually, I was discussing about the complex data type. Did I show the example? I just showed on the website, but not uh, practically I didn't show it. So first we take it this exercises, okay, this uh, chapter one, so that you can start practicing, right? Uh, okay. So data, I, I will I will form it like how, how we'll do the setup of this one so that you can practice, okay? So this is my folder, data and script, right? So I can run all the SQLs here, right? My SQLs are here. So I can start the terminal. I can start terminal here. And uh, I will be starting, okay, hi here. So I will be. First, I check my Hadoop services, APS. Okay. And uh, after you start the hive. Okay, so now I start my five share. <clears throat> Okay, so here I'm. I started Hive shell here, so I will be getting all these HQLs are here. So I will be okay. Just uh, test this one. Okay, so this is a complex data type is there, right? I'm creating an employee table. So this is employee table, right? Uh, query. Okay, I'm creating a table, and this is a complex data type. I have a workplace is an array type, and the gender age is a struct type. So the two part of the gender is right. One is a gender and one is a age. Okay. And it's a complex data type, a struct type. Why it is a struct? Because it's both are the different data type. And array is same data type. Like all the values are the same data type. Okay. So we'll see that what is the, what is the data there for <clears throat> employee.txt. So employee.txt you see here, this is the the name of the person. This is the workplace, the comma separated. Okay. And this is a gender age, male comma 30. Okay. And this is the key value pair. Okay. So you can see here all the different, different types are there. And the items are, the fields are separated by pipe symbol. So that's our difference here. If you see in the query here, the fields are separated by pipe, collection item terminated by comma, and map keys are terminated by colon. If you see in this file, map keys are terminated by colon. Okay. So last example, which I showed you, there was a hash as a symbol. So whatever symbol is there, it's not a problem. You have to check what is there in your file. According to that, you can change your create table syntax. Okay. So first you are going to create a table. Okay. So I will use my database. Okay. So yesterday we created database, right? So show databases. Okay, so use April 6th database. Okay, show tables. Yesterday we created some tables. Okay, these tables we created yesterday, which are the partitioning related internal and external table. Okay, so now I'm creating the, I'm creating a, this employee table. Okay, so I created my, this employee table I created. Now I have to load the data. So load data local in path and what is the path of my this file okay so this employee.txt file is in this location so i will take the path of this file i will take this path of the file slash employee.txt into table employee okay and I have written data. Now I will do query, select star from employee. When I do query, I will get data like this. If it is an array type, it is coming in the square bracket. If it is a struct type, it is coming in the braces. If it is a key value pair, it is in the braces, but it is the key and value. Okay, suppose now I want to take it, my 
uh, what is the field of uh, the workplace? Okay, so workplace and name. Okay, so first value is the name, comma, workplace, work underscore place of, I say, I want zero. Okay, so that is my first workplace, the first value in the array, I want to take it, gender age. So gender age, field name is gender age. So gender underscore age, gender underscore age dot. So when I say gender underscore age dot, so which field you want to take it? The gender field you want to take it or age one? So if I say gender, if I say gender, so I will get the gender value. Okay. And if I want to take it any map value, so map value is my, this is a map. So there are two map type are there. One is map with key is a string, value is a int. Second map is key is a string, but value is an array of a string, like multiple departments are there. Okay. So, okay. I want to take it this map. I want to, I want to take it this map and I say a square bracket, I will say single code. What? So index array and map, how to different, what is the difference? Here is you are taking a zero, one, two, three, like that indexes, but in the map, it's the same square bracket, but you will give the key. Okay. So key is like DB is a key. So this DB is a key I'm giving. So only DB you are giving, but DB is not there, right? DB is not here. So here, whatever is there, you can take it that one. Suppose you say here, you say here, you say here, right? Okay. I want to get the skill score. The skill score of Python. The skill score. Like he is my Python. So I have to keep it same string Python. Okay. So this is the one. Okay. Now I want to say from employee. So now I'm getting the specific values. So you see wherever I'm doing the DB, so DB value is coming. Where I'm doing the Python, the so Python value is coming. Other values are coming now, right? Okay, so this is the way like uh, to take the data as a complex data, right? So here, if your data types are the complex data type, how to retrieve the data from your table, okay? So load data table command I showed you, right? Uh, how to write the data and then you can do select query. And these are our queries they have given to you. So we can try these queries, okay? This is a, a query they have given, okay? So you can take it like, this is the query. Suppose you want to uh, gender A's only you want. So all the gender A's will come because you are not giving any condition. When you're not giving any condition, where clause, so all the record gender A's is coming. And gender A's is a complete field you are giving. If you give the gender A's gender, so only gender will come. Okay. If you are giving gender A's dot age, then the age will come. So here you are saying gender A's dot so this is, you have to see, right? You have to get a complete collection or you have to bring a specific value in the collection. If you get a specific value in the collection, you have to use dot operator because it's a struct type. So struct type, you can take it. Like this is the example you can see. It is giving a separate, separate value. Okay, if you want to get all the skill score, suppose no matter what is the, uh, like the values are there, you want all the skill scores, so just say skill scores. So here is a one scale, here is a one scale, here is a one scale, here is a two scales. Okay. But particular skills you say, so you can write the query like this. Okay. So wherever that, that key will not be there, it will be null value. Okay. Mm -hmm. So wherever the key is not there, it will be coming a null value. Okay. Okay. So department title. Suppose I want to take the department title. So department title, the whole I will be taking a department. So here is a list of values. So string is a key. And list of values, even it is a single value, but it is a list type. It is a list type. So if you want to get like department title product, then you are saying is a product. If it's a department title of test, so whatever value is coming will be considered as a test site or COE or center of excellence or sales. Okay. So when you are running this query, you will get the value specifically. So you are getting the value, right? Uh, you are getting the value here, wherever the, whatever the title is there, like product is there, so product developer is coming. Wherever test is there, this is a test. Test is a key, lead is coming. 
lead is coming. Okay. So this is the way of getting the data from the map type. Okay. Okay. So this is this is just we have done the complex data type. So till here we finish the complex data type. Next is okay. How to create a database if the database if not exists command. So generally this command we use safer side. Suppose my data is is exists. I don't want to delete. But database if not exists then create database. Same like a create table if not exists. So generally this kind of uh, if not exist clause we use if checking it whether it's already exists or not. Exists. Okay. So create a database with the location, comment and meta information I can add. So database just simply sometimes we create just create database database name. But we can add more information while creating a database. So that later point of time you want to see who created database. Who is the author of the database? What is the location of the database? What is the property? DB properties you can define like author, date, when the database is created. Okay. Show databases. Even the databases you can use some some wildcard character, right? Like okay, specific databases. Okay, we right now nothing is coming. So you say <clears throat> my database's name was April. A I use. Okay. So A starting all the database. So it is coming April. Okay. So this way, if you want to describe any database, so describe command is there. Describe database April 6th. Okay. So it will be describing the database. So this is uh, giving who is the user, who is the, what is the URL is the database, right? And uh, Arvind is the user type. Okay. So it is a database name. So this is uh, just describing the Current database, yesterday I told about that. Drop database, you can drop the database if exists. So this is again, if exists, you are using. Alter database. I told you yesterday, there are alters command is there. Alter you can do on the database. You can do table alter. You can do view alter, index alter. Anything you can do alter. Alter means something you want to modify. That is alter. So suppose you want to change the DB property of the username you want to change edited by or honor you want to change, you can do the alter. Okay. Generally database doesn't have much property because database is uh, uh, just uh, the containers, right? You are creating a database and then after you are creating a tables. Okay. So database doesn't have much information. So that is the reason you can't do much alter on that. But table you can have, like table you can alter the field, you can modify the field, you can delete the field, okay? And you can rename the field, right? Anything you can do with the alter in the table. Okay. Now, next is you are creating a hive DDL, right? So suppose I'm creating an external table, loading the data in external table. Okay. This all you can try. Yesterday I showed you like some on table I created, but here is a one employee internal table. So employee internal is using the some employee.txt file only. This is the same file. But the table is created another table with the name is employee internal because this is an internal table. It is not having any external keyword. Okay. Same table they are creating again as an external table. So just change the name and just doing the same data, same employee.txt they are using for the different, different purpose, right? They are creating an internal table, an external table. External table they are giving a location. If you see here, they have given a Hadoop location. This is a Hadoop location. And they are loading the data load data local path command right load data in path command so in path command and local local in path what is the difference actually there are the two commands i didn't tell about this in path command in path command is used when your data is in hadoop file system suppose you have you are moving hadoop to hadoop because your your some some location in hadoop you have and from that location you are writing data into your table okay because this this table is also on hadoop and this location also in hadoop so you will not use local keyword. Generally, local keyword is better, right? Because uh, sometimes your data is in local file system. So first, either you go and uh, you move your data to Hadoop file system, then you will use this command or directly you can use local in path, which is more easy. Local in path is easy, right? So two step why you will go for, okay? If your already data is present in Hadoop file system, okay, then you can use it then there is no point to use local in path. Okay. So in that case, you will use in path command. Okay. So remember it, local in path is used when you have the file in your local file system, your Ubuntu file system. Okay. Unix file system. But you have a file in your Hadoop file system. 
so you will use in path local keyword you will remove okay okay suppose if i want to create a table as a cps right i will say create table as select so whatever my table is there i want to create another table as a similar schema okay so if i copy this command just i run this command okay but i don't have employee internal but i have an employee table okay i want to create a, another table similar to employee so my table name is a cpas employee this table okay i want to create a new table so i want to say my schema and data everything should be copied it's like a clone right i'm creating a table as it is so if i make it here select star okay first i see dsc dsc describe i do and i want to check my this table new table so i'm i'm getting the same fields if i check the query if i query the table okay and then i can so sometimes uh, if you want to do some manipulation on your existing table and you want to take the backup so for backup purpose it is very good right it will create a schema and it will create a data okay so if i check the location of this table what is the location okay because it is a new table created right so generally every time the table is created the data is copied in this table folder or it is using the existing table folder okay so how to check hadoop fs minus ls and i will use the warehouse directory user hive warehouse slash <clears throat> April 6th. First, I see whether my table folder is created. It's the file or April 6th. Okay, actually, this is a dot DB will come. Okay, always remember because your database is always as a database dot DB name. Okay, so that is a folder name. Okay, so here if you look at here, all the tables are there. So CTAS table is created. Okay, let's see in this table how do FS minus LS. Okay, so this is a new table folder. If I check in this new table folder, can you see the one file is copied and this name is given by the hive? Okay, because Hive is making, Hive is copying this file, right, from, so it is like a doing CP command. It is doing in Hadoop to Hadoop copy. So what they did, they, the Hive has copied the file from the employee TXT file to the, the, but it has not given the same file name. Okay, what is the file name is there? If I check the employee table, okay, if I check employee folder, what is the file is there? So if I check here, I will get employee.txt because whatever the name of the file, right? Employee.txt. But when it is copying the file, it is giving its own name. The data is same. If you want to see the cat command, you will see the data is same. If you see Hadoop FS minus cat, so you will see the data is data is same. Actually, slash I forgot before user. So I need to give slash before user okay so when i see here is a file this file is having the same content but if you look at oh it is coming okay this is not coming from one if i see select star from Yes, employee. Data is coming different way, but if I'm just doing the query, select name from a workplace of zero from employee. Yeah, it is coming correct. If we look at our uh, employee.txt file and this file, the difference is
is my table name and line. Web test minus cat. I'm doing and write out PhD. Yeah, here is a proper delimited character is there. Okay. So if I want to create a temporary table, like, okay, so temporary keyword is there, like I want to create a, like just for temporary data holding. So temporary table is there, like this, you can try. And you can create a one table with different different like select clause like right? you say you want to combine the data you want to combine the data from these different different uh, the where clause right you are saying here the name is michael that data you want to get as a r1 and r2 is uh, with this data r3 is this data and then finally you are combining all the data and you are getting the select so this is the way you can do so city is very very important right you can create your own common table expression and then you can define uh, like the CT and then you can query to your CT, right? You can CT, you can query. Okay, common table as select, you can define any table like uh, some where condition like or like create table you can do like count or show tables you have or uh, regex you can do, wildcard character you can use. So this all command, alter table command. So this command you can all try like uh, changing the location, column, even the alter table you can do enable or disable drop right suppose you don't want to allow the dropping table so if you if you enable this enable the if any table you allow this no drop so you will not be allowed the drop so it's just a command Cannot recognize input near enable. Statement this. Uh, Allowing or not newer version. Okay, needs to check. Okay, whether it's alter table. So these all alter table, like you can change the column, you can change the like the field, right? You can change. Okay, you can try this all things. Alter tables like add new column, right? You are adding a new column, add a column. In the partition tables also, you can do the alter also. So the partition management, right? Alter table, add partition. You want to add the partition in your table. Show partitions will be showing the partitions on all the one. Or you want to drop any partition, right? In your table. So simply drop partition command is there, okay? Or you want to check if the drop if exists, right? So you can do rename partition, you can do renaming. So old partition name and rename to new partition name. So you can tell uh, old to rename partition. And alter table, like you have the partitions, like you can set if you don't want to allow no drop and disable, and these all properties are there. Okay. So if you want to create a bucketing in the, yesterday we seen the partitioning, right? We have uh, seen that we can create a logical group of the data by partition. 
But bucketing is like uh, you have one partition can be divided into the multiple files. So that data can be distributed by using hashing technique. It will be distributed into the number of files. And whenever you want to get the data, uh, the particular record you can get from that particular one file. So using the hashing technique is used. So the, the advantage of the bucketing is in the partition, you have lots of records are there, but you want to get a specific record that you can take it by using the bucketing. So bucketing, you have to use one clustered by key. So you have to specify one clustered by clause. So here, when you're using, this is a simple table. This is not a bucketing table. This is a simple table. And now they are saying it, this is an employee ID bucket table. And here you are saying clustered by employee ID. So in partition, we use the column, which is the repeated data, right? Like I'm using a city column. So city is the repeating data is there. But the employee ID column is a unique data, right? It's a uh, generally we use for bucketing the unique key column. The value is not repeated. And the partition we use the repeated, right? Generally, the partition we create for the, the value is repeated. But the bucketing is means right if any particular ID I want to search, right? So I can search in the bucket. Okay. So that is the reason we make it. So if I want to create for any table bucket, um, bucketing, right? So I simply define this clustered by clause. So clustered by and give the column which I want to make it as a bucketing column into number of two bucket. So what it means, like one partition will be divided into the two files, right? Okay. So suppose you have a four records are there, the two, two records will be divided into the two files. Okay. So that is basically defined the into number of bucket. So when I'm going to create a table, okay. And uh, I'm, I'm setting it here, map reduce task. So map reduce task, uh, you are setting here, how many number of output file you want and the hive in force bucketing. So this properties we have to enable, okay. And then we can load the data into bucketing. So you will see it will be distributing data into number of files. Okay. So suppose I'm overriding first time having the data in this employee ID table. And this employee ID table is, I create this employee ID table. And this employee ID table, this is a source table. Okay. Just, just think about it like we were writing the data from source to dynamic partition we are doing. So same like uh, we are having a one source table. And this source table, we have all the columns, okay? And we are doing the bucketing on the employee ID. This is my bucketing column, okay? So I will write the data first in this one. So I will be, I will be changing the location. So my location of the file is employee ID. This file is here. So I will take this location of the file. I will change the location of the file employee id.txt override into table employee id. So if you use override keyword, if the data is already present, but generally first time when you are writing data, it is not there, but override will next time again, you run the same command. It will override. It will not append. So that is the reason we are going to do. So I'm loading the data. But this is not in path. What it will come here? local in path okay because you are trying in path means hadoop path this is not a hadoop path right so definitely it will say not found okay so always remember right which what you have to use local in path or in path so wherever your file is there accordingly you use okay now my data is loaded so i will check it select start from employee id okay so my this table is populated Okay, so this this table has a lot of data is there. Okay, so this table is populated. Now I'm doing in my bucketing table, right? This is my bucketing table. I want to write the data from employee ID table. So I'm simply insert override table. Employee ID table is now, if I see the employee ID bucket table, so select star from employee ID. What is my bucket table name? Employee ID buckets. So I'm just checking initially, there is no data. It is empty. 
Okay, I'm just going to show you before inserting data. But here is no partition. Remember it, this is bucketing can be allowed without partition also. But suppose if I'm having partition by clause, like partition by I can do on say workplace or some other column, which column is the, the column is a repeated value. I can do partition and within partition, I can do the clustered by, but this bucketing can be allowed with partition or without partition. But this, our use case is there is no partition. It will be, it will be directly into number of output file will be divided. Okay. So once my data is loaded, now I see, but here I'm not able to find, right? If this is the total data is coming. So now I check, first of all, in this location, I should go and find out how many files are created. Okay. If I go this table and I check the location, I do fs minus ls and user i warehouse and l6 slash so this is dot db will come well, otherwise you will not find the folder okay in this folder in the table folder, you can see two files is created. So both are near about the same size. Okay, let's see first file. What is the data? Okay, copy. I do fs minus. So when I print it, this is the data. So this data went into one file. I copy this data and then I will paste it here. Okay, so this is the data from the one file. And the second file data, based on the bucketing, the second file data is 001. 00010. So one is here. Okay. If I'm using partition also, so this files will be creating a specific partition, right? Every partition has two, two files. But here is no partition thing is there. So that is the reason here is only bucketing. So this is the second file. The so first file is having 13 record and the second file has 12 record, right? So because basically the records are 25, right? So equally cannot be divided, right? So one will take 13 and one will take the 12 record, okay? So this is the way of the file is divided. So can you see the unique IDs are there? Okay, now if I want to say, okay, I want to do query in my table. Okay, let's start from this employee ID bucket and a specific ID I search. Okay, I search where, okay, I say my field is Okay, so employee ID is a field, right? We have the bucketing column, employee underscore ID. So if I say where employee ID, I say 100. Okay, this is coming through bucketing, right? It's coming faster way, right? Because it knows it is, this is the bucket. So it will search only in this bucket, okay? Because the 100 is coming here. If it is going to search this particular record, 150, right? So 115 is there, so it will be searching the second bucket. So this is good when you have more data, right? That is the reason it will be more faster, okay? So this is the use case of the bucket. I hope like you guys understand. So you can try it, okay? <clears throat> and uh, views, right? How to create a views. So views is uh, basically view is the read-only data. 
So generally view we create like uh, if multiple tables, right? Uh, I want to join and I want to get the data commonly in a one particular view. So view we can provide. So suppose I say I have a, uh, like here is a view is from one table only, but it could be a case, right? You have a, some join query and you want to get the data from. So just you are creating a view command and you are specifying your view name and then you are getting the data from the view. So view is selected based on the your select query. Now you do select star. Suppose you want to say show views. Show views will be showing the number of views. Only one view is there. And you want to, you want to see the view syntax. So show create table, same command show create table yesterday I told you, you want to see the view. Okay, so go and play view skills. So it is showing the, this is a create view command. So you are able to see your create view command. Alter view means like you want to change something in the alter view and redefine view. Again, you want to uh, change, right? Suppose now if I check what is the data in the view, so select a star from employee underscore is skills. Okay, I say skills. So I will be seeing this is my data. Now I want to redefine view. Just I do alter view and select star from employee. All data I take rather than a specific data, I make it change. Now, if I do again the select star view, my data is changed in the view. Drop view is like you can drop. Okay, you can delete, you can remove the view. And you want to create a literal view. Literal view is a specific type of view where you use the explode function. Suppose your array field is there and this array field, you want to like uh, get a uh, data separately, like explode, right? This data array to the multiple rows. So multiple rows you want to use with name. So if I say one person has two workplace, X and Y. So with that person with two workplace will come separate, separate row. If you see here, <clears throat> so my table is the uh, employee table, not employee internal. So little view. So you can see Michael, Michael two times because the workplace is two times. So exploded. Which column is exploded here? Workplace. Suppose you want to explode and with the comma delimited you want to do. So same thing you can do. Okay. So it is, it is just uh, some outer join, like still outer view you are creating. So this is the same thing, just you giving in a different format you want to do. Okay, so you are doing, so here is no data is coming because no null values. Okay, so this is the chapter three. So similar way when you come to the chapter four, so chapter four, you will be looking at the other commands are there. I'm not going each and every command because it will take time. So what I'm going to say, like you are going to start from the scratch, right? So you can uh, just practice of this command. So, okay, this is all the basic SQL queries command. And if you are practicing in Hive, automatically your SQL practice will be done because whatever you can do in SQL, everything you can do in Hive, okay? So just think about it, like whatever practice, whatever queries you are running in Hive, okay, you can do the practice indirectly, okay? So here is the, you are saying gender age is age in operator you are using. So in operator is basically used to get the value from the list of values. So you want to check the values from the list of values you use the in operator. You very well know about this in, right? Suppose I'm not sure what value may come. So then you can take uh, some list of values and any one of them value is matching. It will be, it will be selecting the record, okay? Limit, you know, right, uh, take only the limit you can define. And uh, in the Hive 2.1 version onward, the multiple columns can work. Okay, so they have defined like this in operator, we can use like this also. Okay, like one condition is for this and one condition is for this. Like you can define combination of the two uh, values, right, you can do. Okay, that's a tuple values, okay. And the sub queries you can define like inner queries, right? In the select itself, you can give some queries. It will be giving you the result. So first this query will be executed and then you will be getting the result. 
okay out this result and then you will get so this all queries you can try okay because you, if you have created table once then you can practice anything because you will get all the data right so here is a map reduce job is running generally whenever you are using a select queries the map reduce job is not run because it's a simply select the data but here you are using nested query right here is one query inside another query so this in is using this inner queries first it will get the data and it will provide the output of this query to the outer query so this is kind of inner outer query example right so this is i'm getting the result of this okay so like exist operator is there very very well known operator right exist or not exist right you want to check something exists in your inner query or sub query okay so that you can use the exist operator okay and uh, this is another table they are creating for the joining purpose like employee underscore hr so employee hr table you create and you load the data from the employee hr so we create a table so all all these tables are there all the files are there just simply you have to create tables and just change the path here so we change the location of the employee hr data employee hr so this is fine employee hr and then you can load data again you remember always because it should be local always Okay, when you are loading data from your local file system. Okay. And then after that, you are doing some join. You have the two table join, employee table and employee HR. So this is like an equi-join, like where the values and name is matching, only those names data will come. So equi-join and inner join, we can say. Okay, so there is no difference, equi-join and inner join. So just based on and suppose you say you don't you have to where the values are not matching so wherever it's not matching unequal join okay and uh, there are the other condition based join also you can do right where you if condition is there if the employee name is this okay so you are going to uh, match with the the fields you are matching okay so case condition you are defining so case condition you define otherwise the value will be zero else you will be having the same name whatever name is there okay so you are defining the if case conditions you are going to define conditional join okay and uh, come inner join left outer join okay so multi join also there like multiple tables like employee employee hr employee id so common column is their name column so name column is common between the employee and employee hr and employee id so these three tables have the join between the based on the name column self join is when the join itself in the table that is called self join generally when we want to compare the row and the same table with the other rows okay just take an example i have an employee id and i have an employee name and employee manager generally this is the case right whenever you want to compare the salary of the manager right so every employee id has an employee name and then he has the manager id suppose i say manager id 2 and the salary is 100 okay now next is the same manager id like employee id and if this guy name is y and i say his manager is 3 okay his salary is 300 and next is uh, 3 3 is employee id and uh, g and i say his 1 or like is a 100 so like this comparison i want to do the employee salary is greater than the manager salary so if this kind of thing I want to do, okay, if this kind of things I want to do, how can I do that? Okay, so employee salary is greater than, so it is very easy with the self join because when you are doing SQL join, so when you are creating a two alias of the same table and just doing employee dot salary is greater than the manager alias because this one alias will be manager alias, right? Employee M and you say m dot salary so like this you write a query you can try that query and then you will get the employees who have the salaries greater than manager so if i find here one two three like who is having the more salary his manager so if i say one has the salary is 100 and his manager salary is 300 who's greater 100 and 300 so employee salary is less 
Okay, so this is fine. It will not come. This this one will not come. When I compare two, two is having the manager three. And in these two, I will compare. Okay, so employee salary is more, right? So two will come. This employee ID two will come. And when I say three and one, so three salary is hundred, and both are same. So here greater is not there. So only this record will come. So this is my requirement, right? I want to check who are the, and I want to get all the reportees also. Suppose this employee ID one, two, three, and these are reporting to the. This one is reporting to the three and two is reporting also three. Two is, okay, one is reporting to three and two is reporting also three. Okay, three and three. So I want to find the, how many reporting counts are there. So you have to find the count star, right? For how many reportees are there. So you have to use the count star and then you have to check where the manager ID is the same right like okay you will be checking where the the manager is uh, like the same manager right you want to find uh, where the manager is same so that means they are reporting to the same manager okay and uh, some join other one is uh, like uh, you can do um, like uh, some conditional joins you can define like right? some condition base or like some you can use and left join is uh, when the left data left side all data you are getting but right side matching data Okay, so what is the use of the left join? Suppose I say I have a customer and order data is there. Customer data and order data. Okay. I say I want to find all the customer who has not done any order. So generally in the join, what, what you will you want here? First of all, I'm saying left side data all I want. I no matter what order is there, I don't care. I say I need every customer's result. Okay, I, I don't say ki whether he has order or he has not order. I want all the customer data. So I will do the left join and I will get all the customer with their corresponding order. Suppose this particular customer has order is there. Okay, 101 order is there. But this second customer, there is no order. So there is no order is there matching order. So I say this customer order ID is 101 and customer ID 1. But this other order is 102, but there is a order customer ID is three. And this custom, this, this order is 103 and that has the customer ID four. Okay. So if I say here, if left join, if I do, so I will get one, two, three, all the data, but two, we will be having right side null data because he has no order. Okay. But if I say, I want only the customer who has ordered. In that case, your one and three will come because only matching matching will data will come and I will put a one condition. The, the la, right side customer ID should not be there. If customer ID is not there means he has not ordered. Okay. If I want like customers who has no order. So in that case, I will take two because I will match here the customer ID null. So if in uh, left outer join, if I put the condition, my condition will give me either I want a uh, customer with the order or customer without order or no matter like customer and order, uh, like I want all the customer data. So three scenarios are there, you can use it, okay? So that is basically your left outer join. So same thing applied on the right outer join when you take the right side data and the left side matching, non-matching data. Okay, full outer join. It means uh, like you are saying no matter it's a matching non matching everything you want from both the tables. So that is full. So left or out right outer join combination is called full. Okay. Cross join is a multiply right you can say okay both the tables multiply the number of record you want cross. Join. Unequal join or this map side join is when the small table fit into the memory you can use the map join. And this is like faster way for getting the data right suppose some data some table you say which is having your uh, like department and you want to join with the employee an employee is a large table and the department is a small table so you can use map join department here okay. and uh, some this uh, bucket map join strategies are there left semi join left semi join is from left to right you want to check which are the matching record is there okay Suppose the same customer order, I'm saying left outer join. The same thing you can do here. 
but there in the left outer join you put the condition in the right side whether customer id null or not null then you will get the uh, left semi okay but in the left semi itself either you can use the exist operator or other way is left semi keyword is there okay so either you use the left semi keyword you will directly get it but if you don't want you want don't want to use left semi keyword so then you have to give exist operator like which are the matching record from left to right okay union is there union all is there right uh, you, you union is like basically the uh, removing the duplicate right in both the tables right union is combining the rows see join is basically combining the data based on the column the number of rows will not change right depend on the join depend on the join the number of rows make it less or more but in case of union is it is always combining the row wise you are going row wise combining the data and join is a combining the data column wise you are mixing the column you are combining the column of the two table right then you are creating a join okay okay so there are the, some union operators are there this union and intersection and uh, like the intersection minus operator right so minus is same like uh, you have something is present in left not present in the right so same thing whatever you do the left outer join or left semi you can define like the matching so reverse is the matching is a non-exist operator okay exist and non-exist okay it's clear everyone okay we take a break and uh, then i will be doing the next uh, the some windowing function or something okay
So are you guys getting my voice? Yes. yes. Okay. So we were talking about uh, last um, joints. Okay. So. So th these things you can try. I want to tell something like uh, UDF and uh, I'm thinking like I should cover something the third is. Okay. So, so how to create a CSV JSON third day. Okay. So it's there in the chapter. High. Okay, one more thing is there in the high ways import export, right? Where this is very useful whenever you want to export the tables from the uh, one database to another database or one cluster to another cluster, right? Suppose you have you have to import the data, export the data, and the other database you can import the data. So that that survey is there, like any single table you want to import and you export. So first you will use the export command and export command. You will give the some location in Hadoop file system. And this particular file, the whatever file is created here for the export, the same file you will import it. OK, the same directory you will import it. OK, so it's very simple. Suppose I want to. And even the partitions also you can export import. So every type of import export is there like you can do import of the table or export as a table or partition of the table you want to export or import you can do okay so first we check like okay we have the employee table i want to export this table okay so i give the this command export table and i'm giving here some my hadoop location okay so i import export i do I have not created this directory. Let's see if it's creating. Okay. Okay, first simple table. It's no table. You can test one, two, three, okay. start from test one, two, three, four. Stay four. If I check here. And it will not be the reason why it is. Application event ID. Exception. Maybe these features you need to check, like export and import. So this is earlier version of Hive supporting. So in the latest version, export and import. I think one. So some of the time the things are obsolete, so we cannot. So export table, so export syntax, export table, table name, partition, the table name, and export target. So export table, table name. So we are giving the same thing, export table, table name. 
केबल टेबल नहीं तो सम And check this exception. Okay, command is correct. Let me check. Okay. So next is uh, we can uh, order by and sort by. Actually, there are two clauses are there. Order by is a global sort and sort by is a reducer label sort. So when I do order by, order by is doing the global sort, right? And it's the more time consuming. But sometimes when I'm dividing my reducer task two, right? I want to divide the output in my two files then i can use the sort by the sort by will make it making it sort sorting on the reducer level so suppose i'm doing the uh, two files like i'm doing sort by name so my sorting will happen in both the files separately right so it will be faster than the global sort so order by is a global sort right if i run this query so it will be making it my sorting global okay so global sort is across the all the, the entire data it will be sorting okay but the reducer label sorting i want to do then i go for sort by clause and sort by clause i can use when i'm defining the number of reduced stars and then i can define the sort by so sort by i'm using here order by i'm using name column here i'm using sort by name so the difference is it's a one single file will be giving as an output file here is the two files are the output file okay the reducer will be it will be divided into the two output files like same like bucketing we are doing so you can say right uh, the individual files right the multiple output files will be sorted by name okay so that's uh, sometimes whenever we want all individual files all output files will be sorted by their own field so that will be used by the sort by okay one is a distributed by and cluster by the so total four clauses there Okay, sort by, order by, distribute by, and cluster by. These two are, uh, we can say, the similar type, like distribute by is uh, distributing the data, okay, into multiple machines, so distributed by, cluster by is uh, creating a multiple output file. So cluster by we use, right? So we already seen the cluster by clause in the bucketing, right? Okay, so distribute by and sort by what you use, same thing with the cluster by we can do. So distributed by, you are saying the start date column and sort by within the distribution like the two separate distribution you want to again sort by name okay so that you are going to do with the distribute by and sort by okay so we can use that one and array contains so array contains is the library function that will be checking whether the the array like your workplace contains torrent or not if you want to sorting array you want to do you can do so this is just uh, arrays functions these are the arrays functions you can directly use these arrays functions you can use it okay so here it is saying true true false true 
and this is shows showing the data in the array in the sorting order. So I'm doing here the sorting as a M, M, and B. So this is a sorting order, order I want to do. Okay. Some date time functions are there. Reverse function is there. So there are many, many functions you can use. And there is a collect list and collect set. Suppose I want to get all the genders as a set. So, so if you want to set means unique values will come. So only two cases will be there, male or female. But list will, whether it's a same or duplicate, it will come all the list. List means it will come all. And set will be coming the unique. That's a collect set. And list will be giving you the duplicate also. But set will be giving a unique. Okay. So two, two columns you will get. One is a gender set. One is a gender list. So gender set is only two are coming. I already told you, you will not be repeated. Okay. And gender list is giving you the all. Like total four record are there. So you are getting male, male, female, female. Right. Like this. Okay. That is a collect list. So entire column values you want to get as a list. So that we call it collect list and collect set. Okay. And there are the like the transaction management you want to do. Suppose you can try this one, like I want to have some table, I have a data and this data is the incremental data, right? Suppose I say my data is a keep loading, right? I'm everyday data, right? So I'm just having a, some source table is there. Like I'm saying that some transaction table I have and this transaction table, I have added some data with the transaction. Uh, the fields are there, employee ID, name, start date and quit date and quit flex. So these are the data that are there. Suppose I'm updating some data. I'm doing a, some update query or I'm doing the delete query, right? And after that, I want to see the result. So everything I'm doing on this transaction table, right? But there is a way like if I do one merge table I create and this merge table, if my initial data is there in this merge table, I'm keeping it. And then I'm doing merge with the merge into my transaction table with the source table, employee update table. So if my one is an existing table and one is a new table. So I say whenever the data comes, I want to merge with my existing table. So I will be using the merge command, merge into command. But I need to decide in this merge into command, which one is my target and which is my source. So target will be my the final table where my I want to finally merge the data. So this source table is the data is incoming data, incoming data, like employee update is the incoming data. So I'm saying this is my incoming data where one person quit, one person has start date updated and one person is newly started. Okay. So here I'm changing the flag. I'm changing the flag based on the, the type of record. Okay. So when I say, when I, after merging this record, what will happen? So 105 was not there in this, my transaction data. So 105 will be added. 100 is quit. So this one, this record will be removed because it quit. And another one is a modify record because the start date has changed. So the earlier, the 102 has a start date 2018-0101. And now the start date of this guy is the 0102. The second of, uh, the, the, the second of Jan. And here is the first of Jan. Right. So one record is a new record. One record is a delete record and one is the update record. Okay. So if I'm having this data and I want to merge with this transaction data, I can use this merge transaction. Okay. So this one I can use here is the three conditions are there when match, when not match or when match match is the two, one is a delete case. One is the update case. So in case of match means I'm ID is matching. So suppose this ID is 100 or 102 and 105. So which ID is matching or which ID is not matching? So the ID which is not matching means that is a new record. So I'm doing insert query. I'm doing insert query. When the ID is matching, then there are two cases. Either I'm going to delete the record or I'm going to insert the record, update the record. Okay. So show transaction, this, this all I will show with the query. You can try this first. There's a transaction management, uh, like uh, you can use the asset property. Okay. Like you can do the uh, transaction management on the hive table. Okay. <clears throat>
So update and delete you can perform in the hive table. By default, it's not allowed. You have to set some configuration property, this, this, this enforce bucketing and transaction manager property. Then only it will allow you to update and delete operations on your hive table. So that is the way. Sixth one. This is the group by functions and aggregate functions are there. So this is like join queries or those aggregate functions you are using. Okay. So this is like uh, you can get the group group by aggregation side. What is the coalesce function? Coalesce function is like something value is null. It will it will set with the zero, whatever value is coming. So if value is null, you will want to set some default value zero. Okay. So you don't want to keep it any empty value in your table. So you want to replace it with the zero values, null values. You want to replace with the zero. So you use a coalesce function we can use in SQL query. Okay. And one is the null if also one more function is the NVL is there also. NVL. So null value replacement is there by using the null value NVL. So that is another function is there. Some like a grouping set and this one. So this is completely SQL, right? I told you, like whatever SQL you want to do, you can do the SQL, right? So so this type of uh, like a SQL slide you can perform, okay, on the tables, okay. And uh, indexing, like you can write a index queries, right? You can write a index ID on the table, right? And uh, index is basically getting the data faster from the table. So when you are doing uh, the like data, right? Sometimes the, the columns, right? You are not using frequently and you want to create an index on those columns, like name column, gender is column. So you can create a, some index. So index is making it your data retrieval faster. So you can get the index, show index, alter index. Okay. You can create index, drop index, right? So all those commands are there by index command. Okay. And, um, and uh, right, you can use the indexes and you can drop indexes also. So you can define the indexes. Okay. So if you want to do the some joining, right, uh, like uh, some bucket map join, sort merge join, so these are the configuration property you set it because uh, these joins, so bucket map join, map join, there are different category of the joins are there. Map join, I already told about when your small data fit into the memory. So then you use the map join. Bucket map join is bucketing and then mapping is doing. Sort merge bucket join is, it's called SMB join and where it is doing sorting, merging, bucketing. Okay. Okay. So sort merge bucket map join is there. SMB M join is there. Okay. So these are the different joining strategies. So we want to see more joining strategies example. Okay. So high joining strategies. So there are the different, different joining. So one type of normal join is there and the other types of joins are the special joins, right? Three joining strategies are there. SMB join is there, shuffle join is there, map side join is there. Spark also having the similar type of joins are there. Okay, so we can see the examples of these type of joining strategies, okay? Like examples, like how to optimize the our join queries. Like when we are using this sorting, merging, bucketing join, so that is making our right uh, aggregation or joining right data will be faster because it will be making it the uh, sorting then it will be uh, bucketing is making it the same key together right in the separate separate bucket it will keep it and then it will be doing the join process okay so that will make it rather than doing a join like uh, we can go because so we have to identify the column where we can do this type of join, right? Which is the, the column, right? Where we can apply this, uh, the sort merge bucket done. So we have to identify the column where we can do the sorting, which column is, uh, uh, we have to identify there. We have more repeated data is there. So we can choose that column for the joining, right? Okay. And then we can uh, combine the data, right? Merging the data, right? From the different data sets. And other joining, <coughs> other, uh, uh, performance tuning is there, vectorization we can enable, <coughs> cost-based optimization enable, right? So these are all internal techniques that are done by the high. Just we have to set the property. So vectorization is nothing but the, it is bulk amount of data. It is uh, 
parallelize. Parallelization is do right. It it take the data in the bulk and then it will be do like performance uh, improvement. It will be doing. Okay. Okay. So these are the some joining. You can go through the books chapter. You will get more clarity on this commands everything. So it is very well explained in the book. Okay. That I already told you. So when you are going for UDF, so Saturdays we check it first Saturday. So Saturday is like basically we are creating a different different types of Saturdays are there, right? Okay. Suppose I want to read the CSV file, JSON file, XML file, Parquet, Avro, ORC. So we can create a different different Saturdays type are there. Okay. So we can just we write stored as ORC. So this is the ORC Saturday. When I say stored as a Parquet, so it will be a Parquet Saturday. Okay, so the file format data will be stored in the disk will be parquet format. Okay, HBase survey is like suppose I have a data in HBase table and I want to read the data into Hive table. So we can make it linking between the Hive and HBase. Okay, Hive can read the data from the HBase table by creating a table in the Hive with HBase property. So I will be defining the what is my HBase table name and my HBase column names. And then it will read the data. And Avro Hive support the different file format data. I, I think I have explained this like Parquet, Avro, ORC. So ORC is a columnar file format. Parquet is a columnar file format. Avro is a row oriented file format. So these file formats are like compressed file format. It is making it less space on the disk, right? So that is the reason. And another file format is a text file format, like CSV, JSON, XML. These are text file format, human readable. So that is the reason it is called the text file format. Okay, and another one is a survey is a regex survey. Suppose I have a log files data. I want to read in the log files data. So similar example, we can create our regex survey type. So survey is you have to decide which survey you have to use. Okay, let me show you the example. Like suppose I have a JSON survey. <clears throat> Suppose I have a, some log file data is there and this log file data, I'm, I'm creating a table out of that. So this is a table, I'm creating a log files data table. Okay, so this is a regex survey. So I'm using host is a, username right ip post is ip identity and user these two are not given the data but time request status and size okay so these are the seven fields are there i'm creating a table for these and i'm creating a table something is this thing Okay, I understood what is the problem. Actually, table that there is nothing problem. The problem is whenever you use the user, right? So this user is now you it's a it's a it's a keyword. So you can't use the user here. Even the time also you can't use it. So always whenever you create a table, right? So you cannot choose your own field with the name user and time. Okay. So that is the problem. So see here input near user is. See, now table is created. So <laughs> we have to remember, okay. So this is the table is created. Now, suppose I have a data, okay, I check the data is.
I think here the data will be there, the common log, see, common access log now. So this is the data. This is a sample data, okay? So this data I want to load into this log file, okay? And this data, so if you see user and right identity is empty, there is no data, okay? But here is the data is there, okay? Here is the data, right? So I say here is no delimited character is there. So this is a regex pattern is there. The pattern is a regex is there. So I want to load this data. So what is my file name? Access log one. So I will be, I will be loading this file. Okay. Load data local in bar. File name is access underscore log one. No, no extension into table and Apache common log two. Now I do select start form Apache common log two. So I can see if any particular field you want to see user identity identity and uh, request the status now but okay, there is no user Okay, so you can see here the data is coming column by column data is coming. So this identity is empty. I want to check the post. So sometimes the analytics you want to do how many the same post count you want to do. So group by post you can do count this stuff. So you can write a query right group by post and then you can do post count right so for the same host how many requests is there so it's a simple query you will be doing the group by queries right the aggregation log yeah so zero percent map and zero percent reduce hundred percent map and hundred percent so this is so only one id and eight number of count record is there. So all are the same. So this is this is a regex survey. Okay. So this is a one example. Like if I see the other example is uh, like this is a one. Like I have to find the other surveys like uh, Parke survey, Avro survey, ORC survey. Okay, suppose you have the JSON data and you want to load the data into the JSON. Okay. So JSON data, so you will create a JSON survey class, right? So JSON survey. It's a famous example, the Raghu. So you go to the Raghu, right? So this guy, Raghu. So here you will get all the queries, everything you will get. Suppose I'm creating a one. This is a JSON data. Okay, so let me check here. My JSON data is there. JSON dot uh, JSON JSON. So some JSON file, test dot JSON. So if I check this file, this is the same data. Okay, and this JSON data I want to load into my table. So this is my test dot JSON. Right. So I will create a table. Have to use. Uh, not this class, we have to use another package.
So first is we have to add the JSON survey jar in our class path because whenever we are doing add jar, so we have to go to jar folder. So there is a jar folder. And I have the JSON survey jar, this jar. We have to add the jar in the class path. So because JSON survey is not by default, so I have to add the survey jar. The jar is added. Now I have to use the create table syntax command. So I have to this is the This is working. So it means the survey class is the this package because whatever jar we registered, this package will work. Okay. So then we can create a table. Okay. So now let, let's try for my this data. Okay. So I will use this survey class. Okay. This survey class I will use. So I will take it. I will take it. This create external jar. Just only I will change here the survey class. Okay. I will change the survey class. Otherwise, it will not create table. So I will use this survey class. Okay, this survey class, I will change it here. This survey class, I am changing. Okay. So it is the one single column, but I have to create a table. Text. Okay, actually, I have to give the two fields. Text, comma, number. Text comma number two columns are there. Text comma number. Text is a string and number is a integer text. Okay. I'm going to create a table. I'm going to create a table. And now, load data, local in path. See? Class test or test. And I want to do into table test. And then select. Why it is coming two, 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 two records? Already this table was there because the data is present on this location, right? So this test or JSON is showing. I do override. So if any existing data, so override input. Override input. Now I see how many two records. So whenever I do again and again loading data, it will be always to record on because I'm using over. Okay, you got it. This is this is just a simple table. If I want to make it complex JSON type table, so I can use this this data. This is a one sample data. So this data is data.txt. So I'm JSON data. Where is the this array array type of data is there? List type of data is there, right? So this is complex data type is there. So this data will be already there in my table. Just I change my create table syntax. 
So I will change my create table syntax here. Change this. Okay, and then I will create a test. So this table I cannot create test. It will create test room. Okay, now I will check the data right in the folder. I will see so this data and everything I will provide to you again. Okay. So, five test three here is the nested chest. So, this is a nested chest. So my file is a nested chest and nested. Okay, so I will load. Load data local in path, and here I will change nested. Nested, and my table name is the test one. Then select star one. So it's very easy, right? Like, okay, now you can select the data. Okay, you have the field name is three. Three of the first value of index I want, and then from test one. So only the colors the zero. This is come. Okay, so this kind of queries uh, we can do. Okay, so let's cover. Okay, uh, next session we'll cover. Okay, and uh, there I will cover UDF things. Okay, and uh, I will cover mostly things. We'll finish it in the next session in high. Okay. And uh, Hive is a little longer session, okay. And uh, Hive and then next to H base and this. Okay, so do practice. I will share this all in the drive, okay, in the classroom links. Okay, already given. If anybody doesn't have the classroom links, can ping me on WhatsApp, okay. I will share the classroom. Okay, the new classroom. Okay, anyone has any question? Awesome. Okay, thanks.